Welcome back to the channel guys and welcome back to a beautiful sunny day and two absolutely stonking motorcycles. I mean, last year we did the MT10 versus the 1290 Super we did. Duke. Yeah. Well, this year we've got our rubber little mitts on the 1390 Super Duke and we've got this bad boy. This is the BMW M1000R. This is the competition version, so as you can tell, dripping in carbon. Uh, absolute weapon to be honest so it's going to be tight it's going to be a really interesting competition between the two isn't it yeah. so uh, if, if that sounds of interest then um, it does <laughs> why, why wouldn't it why wouldn't it then make yourself comfortable grab a cup of tea and jopsy roll the intro So here are the beasts, probably, well, two of the ultimate <laughs> super naked hooligan machines. These are, inc these are incredible. I I've been riding the Super Duke for the last week, absolutely loving it. You've had the uh, M1000R, haven't you, for a couple of weeks. I have. And from your first ride video, or your ride video, it seems you quite liked it. It is incredibly impressive, yeah, I, <clears throat> I love it. I've not ridden the 1390 yet. And that's the absolute truth. I haven't ridden it deliberately. So today's all about comparing the two. But the M1000R competition, obviously this version, amazing. Absolutely. I, I'm struggling to fault it. Is that yeah. It? Well, I rode it last year for a couple of weeks. Absolutely loved it. I've ridden the 1390 on track twice. Brilliant. But this is the, the first time I've used it on the road. So I've done two different track days on it, but not ridden it on the road. But it's incredible, mate. And I know you're going to love it. I know I'm going to love this. It's going to be probably one of the hardest comparisons we've ever done to find a winner here i reckon i'm with you it's going to be an amazing test can't wait to try the 1390 but you're going to have to drag me away from the m1000r <laughs> because it's so so good cool let's get going then so i've been riding the uh, as i said i've been riding the 1390 for the last week it's incredible mate i know i know you're gonna love this it's I know um, I'm gonna. It's, it's quite a lot different to the 1290 it's uh, my old Gen 1 I used to have, which had a Rottweiler airbox, full system, like custom map. This, this has got the performance and the feel of that bike. Just absolute insanity on the throttle. So lively. Uh, and that's stock, that's stock, yeah? And that's complete, this is completely stock. I, I don't think I'd even want to mod one of these. Obviously I'd put a pipe on it, but you do not, I know I always say it, but you do not need any more than what this bike delivers. It's absolute, animal are you in a custom mode then or a, a predefined yeah, I'm, mode i'm in what they call the uh, performance mode which is an unlockable you know you need to pay extra to get that but then you can fully customize the bike sort of how you want it tune everything same here so i'm in race pro mode so just very quickly without boring everyone to death and most people probably know this this that's a customizable mode and i've basically set all the parameters as i like them and it's it's perfect now so I've got, I think it's dynamic for the throttle, so it's not like the one-to-one -one that you can have if you're on track, but it, it's nice, it's, you know, it's very sporty, but not too much for the road. I've got no wheelie control on whatsoever. Uh, not because I like to wheelie, because that would be highly illegal, but just because it feels a little bit more, a little bit more flighty, which is how I like it. But yeah, absolutely fantastic. With these modern bikes, it is so important that you set, go for your electronics and set them up, isn't it? Because you can really ruin a bike you can sort of make or ruin a bike by how you have it set up for your electronics. So I oh, know, totally. It's, it's something you've really got to bear in mind that to have a little play around with these things. When I've ridden this bike on track, I preferred the R version for a bit more support, but on the road, this Evo is just gorgeous. So I've got it in fully automatic mode. It's got magnets in the suspension, so it adjusts stuff really quickly on this. And KTM, let's actually say, or, y, or WP say, it's the most sophisticated electronic suspension on the market. I'm sure other purveyors of electronic suspension Would may have other views. <laughs> <laughs> 
but it's uh, it's incredible and it's even got oh fuck Jesus Christ he just pulled right out of me as I overtook what deliberately well he either didn't see me or tried to kill me but the riding position on this I'd say was sort of moderate I don't think from memory is as much weight over the front as there on the end with those flat bars you've got a lot of weight on the front haven't you but I, I find this riding position absolutely lovely and for a bigger guy there's loads of room it's a real roomy bike this how's the M Greg riding position wise oh it's it's, it's nice it is um it's between a typical naked and a sports bike, I would say. So yeah, you've got the flat bars, which I absolutely love. Um, but you are slightly canted, well, you are canted forward. As I say, not a sports bike would be down here somewhere. So it's, it's, it's comfortable, but it does take quite a lot of the wind off your chest. For a naked, it feels good. Pegs are fairly high, seats fairly hard. I mean, it, you know, there's no doubt about it. It's absolutely sporty, no question about that. But for a road sporty bike, I think they've got the balance about right. If you're coming from a sports bike, then you're going to find that incredibly comfortable, aren't you? Uh, but if you're maybe coming from another naked or middleweight naked, you're going to find it quite aggressive, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But what I like about the M1000R is if, if you want a good bike for the road that's very, very sporty, but you might do the occasional track day or you want to go to the Isle of Man and do some really fast stuff, I think it does fit the bill very well. It's sort of the best of both worlds, I would say. In your first ride video, you were sort of raving about it, and you've been raving about it ever since. Whenever we pull up, you've been raving about it. What's, what's your sort of standout feature which you love about it? Um, I think it's, it's just so perfect to ride quickly or in any way. It just feels so planted and so safe, and the brakes are amazing. The handling is just it's sort of perfection. And I think the other standout thing I often find, and I know you do as well, straight fours can be a bit lacking to low down and a bit boring. I, I feel this engine, which obviously is the S1000RR engine with a shift cam, it's so torquey at the bottom. It, you know, it just, it doesn't feel lacking. It just feels amazing. And it's got so much grunt. Yeah, so I know, I know it's a long answer, but I'm struggling to find fault with anything on it at all. Apart from the price. Well, apart from the price, but yeah, well, but that's... Even that's reasonable though, isn't it? For what you get for your money. I think it is. I mean, I, I think that the competition version, which this clearly is, it is getting, you know, really, really serious on the price. But if you bought the, the you know, the standard M1000R, if you, if you compare it to other bikes in the category, I think it's actually, dare I say it, quite a good value because you get the forged wheels, you get the Acra can, you know, you get a fantastic electronic suite, you get these amazing M brakes. I think it's pretty decent. And not forgetting all the creature comforts like cruise control and heated grips standard as well. Exactly. You know, you literally could buy one and if you want, you didn't have, you wouldn't have to do anything to it if you didn't want to. So yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's bloody brilliant. And um, yeah, I, I, I hate gushing too much about bikes, but if I had the money, I could see myself buying one of these, it's, you know, because it, I, I really do think it's an amazing bit of kit. I'll tell you what, let's, let's pull over up here and we'll do a first swap. Don't crash it, I love it too much. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting, getting all precious about it. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be prizing the key out of my hand when I take it back. <laughs> yeah, I'm absolutely looking forward to trying this 1390 though. You're going to love it, you're going to love it. And as I said at the beginning, I think this is going to be a really hard comparison because both these bikes are our favourites really, aren't they? Key swap, key swap. We have both these bikes are keyless. Both fully keyless. So oh, in terms of it. mode, I don't need to do anything then. So it's that's got a bit it. of traction, but no, no wheelie control on the KTM, yeah? No wheelie control, yeah, exactly. You've, you've got a street You've got street throttle response, which is nice and soft. You can go more aggressive if you want. You've yeah. got uh, automatic suspension, which feels actually quite nice. Okay. Um, yeah. See what you think. So you've got no wheelie control on that either, John, then. So you're in race pro mode, but it's got dynamic throttle. Um, see how you get on. Suspension's soft, but it's not soft at all. It's just, it's just right for the road. Oh, it, feel, it feels nice to sit on, doesn't it? It feels much lower at the rear than the... Uh, the lower at the back and the bars feel higher. Listen, there's some sort of malfunction on the uh, on the dashboards as well over where the speedo would normally be not quite sure what's happened there 
No, I, I cut myself, I slipped, and then my plaster ended up on the dashboard. Oh, on both bikes. Jumping on the S. It's quite a very different riding position. Yeah. The rears are, uh, the bars are high. It actually doesn't feel that aggressive. I thought it's going to feel really aggressive compared to the Super Duke. I actually think it feels a bit less aggressive because of the height of the rear. The, the, the Super Duke feels, I would say, a good, a good few inches taller overall. It really does. I feel like I'm on stilts. Oh, I've got it set in the high mode though, mate. You, you, as I say, you can adjust the height of the rear and I've got it in high. So you can adjust how high you want it. I think it's three levels, low, medium and high. That is high. Got it, yeah. It feels it, that's for sure. But it jacks it out and it puts, it feels, actually feels more aggressive than this when, it, when it's as high as that. Oh, it feels, um, it does feel nice though, straight away. Very familiar, the Super Duke. And the engine is, you know, for a big twin, it always surprises me. It's just so smooth, isn't it? It's so refined. I think when, when I've ridden it on track in the past, you know, you obviously don't, you don't notice how refined the engine is when you're on track. So you're obviously thrashing the, the guts out of it. But when I jumped on the road, I was like, wow, this feels so smooth and beautiful in town for, for, a, big, for a big twin, for a big twin. The caveat, for a big twin. The clutch action is lovely on it as well. And obviously it's got a quick shift in that, but when you are pulling away, it's so... Hydraulic clutch, I've always found the hydraulic clutch on the KTM Super Duke nice. Hang on, wait for me. <laughs> it's got a bit of pickup, isn't it? Oh yeah, just a bit. How do you find the engine on that? Jumping straight on it, the straight four. It's it feels flat compared to the Super Duke. <laughs> flat. I mean, I'm, I'm in, saying that though, I'm in fifth gear because I think when you when you do ride a straight four. They always seem like they're revving much more than they actually are. Yeah, you're, the too, you're in too high gear, yeah? I'm too high gear, so I think you do have to sort of let it sing a little bit, let it rev a little bit more. But yeah, it, it did. When I've written this in the past, I was with you, I thought it had an incredible amount of grunt for a straight four. But I think when you're comparing it to that Super Duke, it, it's, it's nowhere near as much grunt as that, obviously. But it's still very impressive, the amount of grunt it's got. Oh, I'm loving the Super Duke. <laughs> I knew you would. I knew you would. The um, the seat on the Super Duke is more comfortable than that M seat. Yeah, I can feel the seat's quite hard on this, isn't it? It's quite it's quite hard, but probably not overly hard. But we'll see how we get on throughout the day today. Oh, I've got Brewers Droop already. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is epic. It sounds so nice. This this engine on this bike, doesn't it? Oh, the, brake, the, the M brakes are absolutely so good, aren't they? Aren't they good? There's so much feel from the brakes on this bike. Yeah, I'm gonna, let me just try the bit of braking on this. Oh, this, yeah, they're good, they're good. They've not got, I don't think they've quite got the feel of the brakes on this, though. They're perfection on that BMW, aren't they, the brakes? Oh, I think they are. Oh no, this is too good as well. I know, when you were raving about, about this, I was just keeping quiet thinking, yeah, you wait till you try the Super Duke. I think you're going to be impressed. Yeah, and the thing about the Super Duke, which I do like, and it's, it's just the way it is, but because it's the, a V-twin, where your legs are, it's quite, obviously a lot narrower than the BMW. And so, and I do find that it quite comfortable, whereas your legs are a bit splayed. And with, being a naked, obviously both naked, on the BMW, it does push your legs out a little bit once you start going a little bit faster, whereas you, you don't get that as much on here and you've got a little bit of protection, so I do, I do like that. Yeah, and I think uh, we've got to remember, I mean, the Super Duke is a naked built from the ground up. It's not an adaptation of a sports bike, is it? No, very true. I, th I think that, you know, the Ergos, um, I don't know, I'm not going to say they're better because this is beautiful, but I think for a larger guy, I think the Super Duke does fit really well if you're a bit taller. No, I know what you mean, and you know, no, no offence intended, but you're obviously quite a big chap, and you do not look too big for the Super Duke at all. Oh, that's good to know. That's good to yeah, know. Yeah, honestly, you look very good on it, which, um, yeah, it is good to know. Are you listening, Mrs. Chops? That's another reason we need one. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing all I can for you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's got some crumb, that bike, hasn't it? Oh, it's absolutely epic, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> don't be sorry, don't be sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. And actually the handling on the Super G is better than I remember. Oh, that is, that is definitely better on that bike. That bike is better than the 1390. The 1290 even. The 1290 even, yeah. Oh, I actually, my view is it's not about which one's the winner. It's probably which one do you prefer from a personal taste point of view, because already the Super Duke, it's 
it's so hard to criticise because it's so capable now. Uh, it's just whether you like the twin, whether you like, you know, the characteristics of this bike versus the BMW. And it's, at the moment, I'm confused. Yeah, I completely, I, I completely agree. And, and there, is, there is no loser here. As you said, there probably is no winner. It, it does come down to that, that personal preference, doesn't it? What, what floats your boat at the end of the day? Pothole. Like where, where? <laughs> where mate? Yeah, oh, that's true. I'll It'll shout be. out when there is. I'll shout out when there isn't one. <laughs> you might be better off doing that. It's so sure-footed the BMW, isn't it? It's so sure-footed into the corners. I think it's more incredible. So, more so than the Super Duke. It's so lively that Super Duke. It is. The front end of that BMW is delicious, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's locked to the road, isn't it? The feel from the front end. I know, it's, it's bloody brilliant. Yeah, it is nice. I think with the Super Duke, and I found it yesterday, we had a little spirited ride. You've got to be careful when you open the throttle. Well, certainly with the wheelie control off, you've got to be careful. And I think that overall, that would hamper its performance. So you, if you want to go as fast as possible under a sort of uneven ground, you really need to put the wheelie control on. It's that much of an animal. But this, yeah, this is gorgeous, isn't it? Absolutely gorgeous in the bends. Yeah, I can't believe how nice the front end, how planted this bike feels. Absolutely wonderful. And then they say you put the brakes on top of that, which is so progressive and so much feel. You just feel totally in control on that BMW, don't you? No matter what you do. Total control. That's a, that's a, that's a good word to just, a good phrase for this bike. Well, when we came, when, when we met earlier, I was a little bit late leaving. So I had to get a little bit of a shimmy on, on the BMW. And uh, it's just glorious to ride when you push on. It just feels, it, it actually makes it easy. It's a little bit of a cheat because it's so damn good. Oh, cheat mode, cheat mode in game. Cheat mode, yeah, cheat mode. No, I, must, I must admit, the Super G though, you're right, it is extremely good. It's brilliant, mate. It's, it's brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, it, it is. It's. <laughs> I can buy one. Okay. It's, it's like, how can you choose? How can you choose between these bikes? Because when you start pushing on on that, it's so nice, the front end. It's oh, brilliant. It's, yeah. It's gorgeous, isn't it? it? The BM handles better, I think. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah this yeah. handles nicely and it feels brilliant. I don't feel unsafe on it, but that, it reminds me, as I said many times, of the 890 Ducar, yeah. which, which, which was the best handling bike I've ever ridden, I think. And that is, a, it, it's close. Yeah. And it's basically like the 890R with 200 plus horsepower, basically. <laughs>Yeah, the BMW jumping back on it. It feels longer. You've got the dashes a lot further away because it's there on the Super Duke. The BMW feels considerably... I know you've got that jacked up-ish, but this feels considerably lower. It does, yeah. You, you, you're right. That bike feels longer, doesn't it? The BMW feels longer. This feels very short and flighty. A bit like the 890R as well, quite short and flighty. Whereas the BMW feels longer, whether it is or not, don't know. But it feels longer and more locked to the road, doesn't it? They come at it very differently, don't they, as propositions. The Super Duke's like a big, it always was, it's like a massive supermoto, isn't it? You can ride it sort of quite a lot on the rear brake like you would a supermoto as well. You know, it's, it's got that supermoto sort of feel. And I think the BMW's got a more of a sports bike feel. Whereas it is based on the S1000R, so that's probably quite quite obvious, I suppose. Yeah, the brakes are definitely nicer on the BMW. That, I think that is that's not a disputable point. I agree. It, it, this, these are good. They've got loads of power, but I think they lack a little bit of feel. They lack a, that initial feel. They just feel very strong straight away, rather than having that progressiveness which the, the BMW's got. Yeah, what a couple of machines these are, though, eh? <laughs> That is for sure. To the super tube, when as soon as you touch the, give it a handful, the front's in the air. <laughs> the front is, just comes up. It doesn't really matter what gear you're in, <laughs> it comes up. But you do lack a little bit of that sure footedness that the BMW feels like it has. Yeah, the BMW is like it's on bloody rails, literally. Yeah. Oh, is that clutch playing up again? Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. It keeps uh, popping the front up. 
The BMW just feels, it's easier to ride. It feels like it's more locked to the road. You feel like you're getting a bit more feeling from the road maybe as well. I know the suspension's harder, so you're, you know, you are getting more input from the road, but the Super Duke requires more effort to ride fast. That's not a bad thing, because that's, that's engaging, but I think ultimately, if you were timing us <laughs> through these sections of road, you'd be faster, I think, on the BMW. I agree. And, and if you bought one of these bikes because you also wanted to do the occasional track day, you will definitely, in my humble opinion, you'd be faster on the BMW on the track. Yeah, I don't know. This is awesome on track, though, mate. Yeah, like, I maybe, still that's, you would be. maybe that's a part two to the test. Yeah. <laughs> a bit later on. But now that I've been on this for sort of ten minutes, you know, again, I'm like, oh my god, this is amazing. Where, where's my checkbook? <laughs> <laughs> I've hidden it, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank God. Oh, yes, I do like that very much. Oh, got a dirty body. Right, so I'm now just, the purpose of this few minutes is just to test out the low speed town manners of the Super Duke. And you can do the same on the BM, which we know is good. Yeah, it's, that's, that's the beauty of a straight four, isn't it? It's one of the, it's one of their superpowers, really. The way you can just load them up and keep the revs low and they're so well mannered when it comes to going through town aren't they well i'm just doing i'm doing second gear second gear at 30 you know i know it's a low gear but it's it's lovely it's not at all you know you're not like rocking on the throttle it just feels lovely you know I, i'm a big big lover of twins anyway and i, I think the super duke engine has always been a bloody masterpiece really isn't it yeah when you compare that to like the the gen one that we had it was so it was it was hard work wasn't it at low speed it was really hard work mine was as well even after mapping and tuning it was still hard work whereas you know the gen 2 it was a bit better and the gen 3 they nailed it and then the gen 4 just moved on again a little bit ah very sedate lovely billy Connolly. yeah there's not a lot to not like about either of them to be brutally honest with you and you know you, you could you know this is almost a silly test in the sense that you could buy either of these and you're going to be totally and utterly pleased with what you bought uh, you know so then then you're into do you like a twin do you like a straight four there'll be no doubt loads of comments over customer service you know once you own one from ktm versus bmw well well, well someone someone said it's the battle of the warranty claims <laughs> i think both these bikes are for experienced riders really aren't they? You, know, you know what i mean I, I don't think there's any point in buying these bikes unless you're gonna sort of push on and and use them a bit more because that's when they shine i think there's too many compromises like the suspension on this bike if you're just going to poodle around on it it's, it's too hard isn't it you, it's, it's you know it needs to be pushed to get the best out of it and i think it's the same with the super duke as well no you're, you're actually right you know on the bmw that suspension now is as soft as it goes and, and it's still extremely sporty, isn't it? Yes, it's harder than the, the Super Duke is in its automatic mode. But you know, you've got to bear in mind it's an M bike and that's the whole point of it, isn't it? To be ultra sporty. What I'd like to actually do is a comparison with the M and the S 1000R, just to see if you need the M. As, on, as a road bike, do you need the M? Does the well, S you, actually you give don't. you more? Because it's more comfortable. Maybe that's something we need to do. Oh, you look good on it, mate. Super you look good on it. Suits you. I feel good. I feel looks, good. Looks like a big bike, doesn't it? Looks like a really yeah. big bike. Which I like that. I feel very comfortable. I've got long legs, so even though it's yeah. quite tall, I'm, I'm totally flat-footed. Yeah. So that's the, that's the beauty of it, though. If, if you if you if you would find that a bit high, if you're a bit shorter, you can drop the Low it. drop the yeah. height. It's, it's slow riding. Yes, that's a double R. This bike, isn't it? Just the position. Nice bit of grunt out the corners. What gear are you in? Uh, third. It's got enough to... Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> Woo! Oh, that's lovely. Let's have a little swap. Keys. Keys. Just, keys. Leave it running. Leave it running. We just won't bother swapping. We'll swap back in a minute. Will they be right, will they? Yeah, it'll be fine, yeah. Only if you stall it, it won't start. Oh, saying that, I've just stalled it. <laughs> oh, you're joking. <laughs> it started, though. It must have been all right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stall it, that he stalled it. Super Duke up the hill climb. 
yeah, it turns in wonderfully. So much drive out the corners on the twin as well. You just got that power right there, haven't you? To when you squirt out, that's the beauty of a twin, isn't it? Out the corners, you just so nice. <laughs> well, he says the point of this test really got them. They're both absolutely fantastic. It's a personal choice, isn't it? That's all. Personal choice. But yeah, I, I, I find the BM, even on that hill climb, I know you haven't got that twin grunt at the bottom, but it's still, if you've got it in the right gear, it's got so much power and it's still talky. Yeah, it is. It's amazingly talky for a straight four, that thing. Amazingly slow. I think they've got the gear in just perfect on it as well to make the most of the engine, the bottom end. And I don't know if that shift cam gives it extra bottom end as well as top end, but it, it certainly seems to. I'm getting bruised, Drew. Is it not coming up? Is it going down or coming up? It's coming towards me. Uh, you're getting a wreck then, it's coming up. Yeah, it's coming up. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting excited. Go away, camera. Yeah, I think the Super Duke is definitely the more comfortable bike out of the two from a, a seat and a seat point of view. The suspension is hard on the BMW, isn't it? And the thin seat doesn't sort of help. I think there's definitely a bit, bit more comfort on the Super Duke. No, I think there's three things on the Super Duke. You've got more leg room, the seat is wider and definitely softer, and the suspension and the suspension is definitely also softer. So it's definitely a more comfortable proposition from that sense. But having said that, the BMW is so bloody amazing, you're not really thinking about your body anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I want one. <laughs> I want this. I want both. Yeah, I find with a BM, as soon as I jump back on it, and particularly on that bit of road where there's lots of... I definitely feel a bit more confident on it. And I think it is because that front end... Yeah, <laughs> talking about the fact where you have the fist. Well, I think the front end on the BMW is 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 so incredible. Yeah, oh, I, I completely agree. It feels more neutral, doesn't it? It feels more neutral. It, it, it's definitely hugs the road more. It feels more stable. Yeah, it's it, they're both amazing. I mean, just look at them there. I think. I think I prefer the look of the BMW and, and it's hard to tell because that is the competition one it's all carbon it's black it's difficult to tell but I, I, I know but I don't think it's just that I think it just I don't know the, the, the KTM's it's a bit quirky looking isn't it it, it is a bit, it's, it's a bit you know I think you know it's, it's not that I don't like it but it's a bit quirky I think the BMW just looks nicer uh, I'm with you I think from a looks point of view and it's not about it's not because it's the competition of the carbon just forgetting all of that it looks mean you know that headlight you know I, I don't dislike it but I wouldn't say oh my god it's amazing I love the look of it it looks mean there's no question about that I, I'm not sold on this headlight to be honest though. it's not my favorite headlight i think they could have done a bit better with the headlight on that bike yeah i think they, we're one small step away about talking from the, about the mirrors in a minute are we <laughs> <laughs> right, right. What's plan now, then, right? on. let's put the uh track let's put the wheel oh, control this, back this, on this, this, so go out to when he's on very low and i think that'll help this get the power down wheelie yep and we want high wheelie possible Slight wheelie possible, maximum stability. So we want slight wheelie, yeah? Yeah, I think that'd be fine right? for this. Yep. Cool. They're pretty user friendly, the electronics on these to use, aren't they? Yeah, they really are. Both both easy to drive, aren't they? Okay, you ready? Yep. In three, two, one, go! Well, the wheelie control works. That was always going to happen, I think, with the grunt. I might have this in first gear. And then you go second. Yeah, this is lovely around there. Oh, I like whatever bike I've just I'm on at that time. I know, exactly. <laughs> well, I'm sticking with second, but that's fine. First gear on the BMW. So, ready in three, two, one, go! <laughs> oh, the, the Super Duke Studio, is it? Yeah, but that's always the way with the weight difference. We'll see what happens when we swap. This is uh, surprising, actually. The wheelie control's like, do do do, keeping the front end in check. I, I gotta say, the wheelie control on the roll on on the Super is really good. It sort of comes up, and it, but it feels very controlled. It's lovely. You can just pin it. 
really impre really impressive actually. I think that's the biggest sort of change on these you know, electronics in recent years is just how sophisticated like the wheelie control systems are and stuff. I mean it, that's a lot of power it's taming isn't it and it's just should we swap bikes? Yeah, it's swap, yeah. It's and how was it? The edge one is good. Yeah, really good. But you um, you still can't help but back it off a bit. No, yeah, I just pinned it. Did it's you, fine. you put total faith, did you? Total faith. Total faith. And honestly, it, it comes up a little bit, but it's absolutely fine. Okay. I'll go with the total faith approach. Well, then. don't take my word for it. You do whatever <laughs> you want to do. That's what I put on the insurance claim form. I put total faith in the KTM wheelie control system. In three. Two, one, go! Oh, <laughs> You're right. It's basically wheeling the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's incredible. I don't think there's anything in it really. When you take into the weight disadvantage, I don't think there's. I don't think there's anything in it. I really don't. It is, they're both so fast and they're just battling their wheelie control system. It's like the battle of the wheelie control system really, isn't it? There we go, fourth gear roll on, I'm at 3,000 revs. You Ready? It in. in three, two, one, go! Yeah, that's surprising. This BM shifts! <sighs> oh. So fourth gear, both bikes in three, two, one, go! Yeah, it's pretty similar again. I think it's a weight, a weight thing again. Both pretty similar on rolls, which is impressive for this, isn't it? The BMW is impressive though, isn't it? For a straight four, it's, it's straight on there, isn't it? It really is, that's really impressive, isn't it? It's not lacking in grunt. And that's what we've been saying the whole time, isn't it? <laughs> it's good fun, isn't it? It's good yeah, that fun. it is. It's surprising the instant like Yeah, I'm, I'm, on the roll logs, I thought this was going to annihilate no. it, but yeah. Even when you were on that, it wasn't. You weren't pulling away massively, only a tiny bit. I ride that and think, oh my god, it feels instantaneously faster. I don't. It feels. I mean, they're both fast, aren't they? But that is like a missile, and it certainly keeps pulling that. It's like it does, yeah. And then, as the revs go up on that, it's like oh, it gets faster and faster and faster. Top consumer advice, if you want to do roll-ons and lose your license very quickly, either bike will fit the bill beautifully. <laughs> <laughs> Both do a good job at that. <laughs>
I think if I was going to call it, I would, for me, I think I would probably say the BMW just slightly. And the reason for that is because the KTM doesn't handle quite as well and the brakes aren't quite as good. So yeah, I, I think the, the BMW, yeah. the front the front end feel of the BMW and the brakes yeah. and the way it handles. They are it, definitely superior to the Super Duke. They are they? superior. And therefore, yeah. I'm going to call it for that reason. But it doesn't necessarily mean I'd rush out and buy one yeah. against the Super Duke because it's not ju it's not just about that no, total perfection. No. They're both it, very good. It's it's all to do with like the, what you prefer looks wise as well. Yeah. What floats your boat from a looks perspective? What sort of bike you like? Whether you like if you really don't like straight fours, you think they're really boring. I, I suggest you try that because it isn't boring. And you saw from those roll-ons, it's got an incredible amount of go, but it's not as exciting as no. the Super Duke. It's no. not as exciting as the Super Duke. No. So it's really a case of, oh, you need to try both, but yeah. that may not help your decision because that's what we've just no, done. I think you've got to try, you know, my, my advice, you know, consumer advice, you've got, if you're in the market for either of these, or even if you're not in the market, you just want to try them, go and try both. And it, yeah. I'd be interested to see the comments just whether people yeah. can call it by, in a binary manner. You know, and of course, a lot of people say, well, it's the Tuono, no, it's the Street Fighter, they're better bikes. And, and they are both good bikes as well. Yeah. We're not here to talk about those. If you compare them to the what we've got in front of us, yeah. And the KTM 1390 Super Duke, they are both. So really you, you are copping out then? You're not going to choose which no, one you put I, your money I, on? I think so. I think they're both fabulous. And it is. You've got, it, it, you've, we've got a. We've got to make a decision. Well, I'll make a decision. I'm, I'm going to call the BMW okay. for, for the reasons that I just outlined. Yeah. Plus, I think for me personally, I think the BMW, I think I prefer the looks of it over the Super Duke. Yeah. The M version, I think I do. Yeah. yeah. I, um, I, I, same as you, so, so, so close and it changes constantly and all yeah. those things apply. I may think, oh, I made the wrong choice. Yeah. For me, being a bit bigger, I think the Super Duke's a little bit it is. more more bigger and suits the larger rider perhaps a tiny bit better. It's still, yeah. You know, it's not it's more cramped on it's, 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 it's more comfortable. It's more comfortable. Yeah. The suspension's more comfortable. So as a road bike, it sort of does make maybe a bit more sense because it is more comfortable. Yeah, that's fair. The seat's more comfortable, suspension's more comfortable, and yeah. for a bigger guy, it just fits a little bit better. The yeah. leg position's a little bit more comfortable as well. You've got a bit it, more it comfort. It's definitely. And the handling and everything else is so close. Yeah. It's it's I would say it's probably more exciting as well, a tiny yeah. bit yeah. because of the way it yeah. feels flighty and it's lifting the wheel yeah. and it's yeah. Um, so I think I'd go Super Duke, but yeah, it's a bit bonkers, isn't it? The Super Duke. It's bonkers in, a good way. in about, and I think it will make a brilliant. Tra they both make fantastic yeah, nakeds yeah. on track, yeah. without a doubt. And maybe we will do, you know, a track comparison at some really point because nice. that that because they are. I think they'd both be amazing. I've ridden yeah. the Super Duke on track already. I know it's amazing. Yeah. So I, I think I would go Super Duke, but it's really, really it's close. Really it's enough. really, really yeah. close. So, uh, well, so there thanks. we go, mate. Thanks so, for inviting me. Absolutely, what a test! Another one of those. It has been one of the most enjoyable tests. Yeah. So if there's any comparisons you want to see us do, when I mean, we've got lined up, we're going to do the middleweight sort of sports bikes. So the yep. new sort of 8R and the new Daytona um, thrown in there. And maybe the CB650R. So maybe we go a triple, a twin and a four. So we're going to do that. Um, that's probably with Mossy as well. We'll get Mossy involved with that one as well. But anything else you want us to do, then let us know in the comments and we'll try and make it happen. But, uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. We've certainly enjoyed it. I don't care if you've enjoyed it or not. No, We've enjoyed it enough. <laughs> We've oh, done it. Okay, of course. But uh, thanks for watching as always. See you in the next one, guys. Cheers.